Hello and welcome back to the channel. This is a updated video on um, using React Fire with React, of course. I have an old series on my YouTube channel, which you can see is about a year old, which covers um, using React and React Fire with login, logout, testing using Firebase Emulator, and then I do queries and collections, and then I integrate um, a Redux toolkit. Please check out those videos. However, these videos are based on version 3, and so I'm kind of going through the process of updating all of them to um, work with version 4 of uh, React Fire. Um, this first video, I'm starting with the intro. We'll cover login, logout, and create user. I'm not going to cover setting up uh, the Firebase Emulator because it's pretty much the same, but I am using Firebase Emulator in this application also. Um, I'm using Firebase Auth and I'm using um, Firebase Storage. And I think I, in the last one I didn't upload images, so I'll probably upload images um, in the video. I think what I'm also gonna do is I'll cover all that in the next video, which will be querying the collections, adding the leading documentations, um, um, adding and deleting documents, and also uploading blobs. So that's what I'm gonna cover. Also for those don't be scared, I am using Ionic as the UI framework, but Underneath it all is React code, so the React code that you see here will work in your plain React application. Uh, if you have any questions about that, leave a comment below. Also, please do me a favor and like and subscribe, share my videos, and just talk about the great stuff that you're learning from checking out my channel. So um, the other thing is all of the source code for this um, video series will be in my GitHub repo. I already have the code for the first stuff I'm covering posted. Uh, I'm probably going to try and just add a branch for each one of the separate sections with the most recent solution being left on the head. But what I'll try and do is update the uh, README to indicate where you can get access to the code related to the specific videos. Alright, so let's kind of shrink my head and get to the code. Here's a link that I'll include that shows you how to get Firebase Emulator started up. Also, my previous um, video goes through the whole setup on how to get um, Firebase Emulator working in your application. Please note that there is an issue right now with the emulator, which doesn't appear to work if you're on Node version 17. So Node minus V. I'm on uh, 16, so everything works fine for me. Um, and then you need to make some changes in your application. Let me get, get this open here. Where's my index.tsx? You need to make some changes in your application, app.tsx here. Um, to, I, also, I copied this directly from the example. Uh, to let the application know that you're using the emulator. So this is connecting me to the Firestore emulator and this is connecting me to the authentication emulator. Um, so that's kind of the basics. Now let's get the emulator running and you get Firebase emulators start. So my emulator has started up and these are the links so you can actually see everything. And then the next thing, let me create another terminal and let's do an npm run start to get my application running. Okay, so now we have the app running. So let's, let's start with the setup. So everything starts with the index.tsx. You need your Firebase configuration. Um, we've imported the app provider, we passed in a configuration, and we're wrapping the whole top level app with this, um, with this Firebase app provider. So that's inside of our index.tsx. Uh, index Let me move over to app.tsx, and this is where things really start to get a little bit more interesting. Um, inside of our app component, we are starting to use the new Firebase hooks. So we have this use Firebase app hook, which gives us access to the app. We want to get the database that's associated with this project. So we do that with the get Firestore. And then we need the authentication um, component that's associated with this specific application also. This is the setup to make to get everything to kind of work in um, using the emulator. Like I said, I took this directly from the React Fire um, 
uh, GitHub repo, and I'll, I'll have links for all of that inside of the uh, comment section of the video. So this is just saying to use my uh, emulator and everything. And so I fired that up before, and you can see here's the links to everything. And so after we add a user, I'll kind of show the user inside of the authentication database. And so that's what we'll be able to do there. So right now, this is just auth, uh, console logging the current user. Let's just take that out. We don't want that. And then here we go inside of how we kind of have our routes set up and how we're kind of protecting the routes and everything. So at the top level, we have this auth provider, and this auth provider is provided to us by React Fire. And then it has this one property, which is SDK, and then we pass in the auth object that we got up here from doing it auth. And then we have the Firestore provider, which gives us access to the database. We're using the Firestore database, not the real-time database. And once again, there's another provider that we got up here from React Fire, where we're passing that information in. And so that's how we get access to the database. Now, this is Ionic specific stuff here, this Ionic React router and the Ionic router outlet. You can just ignore this Ionic stuff. And if you're using regular React, you just replace this with the React router and kind of put it around the edges here. Um, maybe I will create a separate file that just kind of shows how you'd set this up just using a regular React router. And then inside of here, this is just basically React router stuff where we have our path set up. Um, the interesting thing here is this private route component, which I've created, and this private route create, uh, this private route component will redirect us back to login if we're attempting to access a private page. The only private page in this app right now is home, and so I have this private route component wrapping around it. And let's kind of scroll down here to the bottom and take a look at what it's doing. Um, the main thing that it's doing here is that it is using a hook that we get from React Fire for use sign-in check, and then we're getting back the status, which is whether or not it's loading, and if it's loading, we kind of render an ionic loader um, UI, and then we return, and if it's not loading, then we'll have some data back, and in that data, we're naming it sign-in check result, and then what we do is, for the route, if the check result is true, then we render the child, which is the component that's passed in. Otherwise, we redirect directly to the login route and we'll render the login route. So that's why we're seeing a specific login route here. Now, there's another way to kind of handle all this, which is also documented um, in the React Fire website, and I'll include a link to that. And what they do is they have this concept of an auth, auth wrapper. And if we scroll up here, you can see that with the auth wrapper, you wrap all of your routes, because right here I have uh, my auth wrapper and I have my routes. So my protected routes are children of auth wrapper. And so that's just pretty much the home route. But then the fallback is my authentication route, which should be authentication root route, because this is the collection of routes that are only accessible when you are not authenticated. And so here you can see I have this separate component here that just returns my login and my create account. And then basically on any other condition, it just drops down to, um, to login. And so this is just another way you can do it with this author wrapper. And I included this as an example right now. Um, it's just called app auth wrapper .tsx. And then in app TSX, I'm using my approach with the private route component and then the, the protected route as a child route. So that's what's going on here inside of the authentication stuff and protecting routes. Um, and so that's how the routes are protected. And then now let's take a look at how the login actually works. So let's just put a dummy information in and we attempt to sign in. Then we get this error message, and so let's kind of take a look at what we have going on on our login page. So the way the route's working is that I come in, I try to go to home. Home is protected. I'm not authenticated. So then it redirects me to my login component. So let's take a look at my login component. And let's see. Here's my login.tsx. Um, regular React stuff we have going on here, but just up at the top, we are going to need access to the auth auth object, we need history, and then this is Ionic. This is our UI stuff that gives me the ability to display a success alert or an error alert. We have our two state variables, um, the email and password. 
And then we have our function, which will do a lot of signing with email and password. If sign is is successful, we're just logging out the user, but then we're also pushing to the home route. Otherwise, we render the error, do an alert, and we just show the alert, which is what you're seeing here. So if I do a sign in alert, uh, that's the error that I'm seeing right there. Um, and then there's nothing special that's inside this page. It's just a simple um, it to input components and on change events, set the values that we need appropriately. And then on sign in, we call our do sign in function. Um, otherwise, we can go to our create account to create an account, which is what we'll do because we don't currently have an account in the system. So on my create account page, very similar to the um, login page, as you can see down here, I just have an email and a password. Um, th this should actually be a type password. Password, um, so that it's private. And actually, let me go back to my login page and do the same thing. Go password. Okay, um, so now we're on create account. Only difference with create account is that it actually creates account and doesn't attempt to log in, but it does the same thing. If I try to create an account, uh, create an account, and be, well, that's interesting. It looks like it went ahead and created an account even without um, email and password being passed in. So clearly I want to fix that issue. Um, All right, so here on create account, we, we're just going to take an email, I'm going to take a password, and then you can create account. So let's just create my first account. I'll use my name Aaron, and then we'll do a simple password, password, one, two, three, four, bang, bang. And then let's create an account, and it has created the account. Um, it has my information, and what I'm doing on the home page, I'm just rendering out the information for the account created. And then what we can also do is we can go down to my emulator and let's take a look and we can go into authentication, the command click. And let's just kind of show what we have here. Uh, and what is that? That's the, let's just copy this link. And so this is something that I was playing with before. Let's delete that user. Um, but here's the user that I just created. And then you saw also now I can sign out. And you saw now that I can come in here and now I should be able to log in with the user that I just created. So this is Aaron, uh, clearly innovative. And then I believe my... Bang, bang. And then um, I'm getting my account information back. And so just let's just take a quick look at the home screen to see how I'm doing that. Once again, I'm using our hooks. I'm get, getting my Firebase app. I'm getting my auth. And then I am able to just render the current user if there is a current user. And then I'm stringifying it and styling it. So that's how you're getting it kind of laid out like this. And so that's how you have the user. And then the last thing is the sign up button up top here. When I click, it signs out and redirects me. And so I'm calling the, um, the sign out function that I'm getting from this Firebase auth library. I just call sign out and then I do a replace, which sends me back to the login route. And then just to make sure that we know everything's working properly, if I try to go to home here, it's checking, see if I have a user, I don't have a user, and it brings me back to login. So like I said, just quickly kind of wanted to update the code from the V3 version of React Fire to V4 to kind of show you the changes. The real, the main change that really happened was in the way that you check for the loser, uh, not the loser, the way you check for the user and kind of protect your routes. Um, and it's now being done with this use sign and check call. So hopefully you found this enjoyable. Please stick around. Next week I will, like I said, I am going to update um, all of the videos. And so right now I just covered this first one. 
And then um, next week I'll drop another video that shows querying the collections, documentations, and using storage. Um, hopefully you found this helpful. Make sure you check the links and go check out the source code. And if you see any changes or errors, please leave a comment below. Thanks, and I will see you next time.